so glad you could join us for part two of this uh, series on building a portfolio. So today I'm going to show you how to actually lay out your design for either your asymmetrical design or your uh, gridded design for symmetrical or radial. So the first one we'll look at is looking at the asymmetrical. In theory, it might be a little bit easier for those of you that uh, have a difficult time with more complicated uh, scenarios, but you know, you're still going to have to think about pattern and um, the arrangement and balance of color. So when you get into your asymmetrical design, you're really going to be playing with that first part of our discussion on balance, where visual weight is going to be really important. You don't want to have a one little spot of red off somewhere and not balance it out with a little bit of red somewhere else. So keep those things in mind when you do this particular project. And when I get finished with the asymmetrical um, demonstration, I'll dive right into the symmetrical radial demonstration. So glad you could join us. I look forward to sharing this with you. Now we're going to talk about the asymmetrical design idea. Again, we're going to be using the letters of your name. So you probably want several sheets of paper. If you have thick paper, that's going to work better than just regular flimsy paper, but it will work fine also. Any kind of paper will work. So I have here some letters I've already cut out and I have more than one uh, font style. So I have this funky E here. <laughs> Actually, I guess for you guys it would look like this, right? Mm. And I also cut out the silhouette of my name. So I have this like so. Uh, and that's the middle name, right? Mm. Okay, so what you want to do is take your marking utensil. It can be a marker, it can be a, let me try blue, it can be a pencil, and you want to draw out your letters. And so you've already tested them out on uh, thumbnails, so you already have an idea of what letters you think you might want to work with and what will work better than others. Whatever you do, you want a nice solid letter, not just a line, because you're going to be cutting it out. It's a shape that we're going to be working with. So right now I'm going to work with a, an E and so, so that I can show you how to cut out the hole safely. So let's see if I can draw an E real quick. All right, so there I have an E. And I have chosen some poster boards so you can see how this works with the thick a little bit better. It's easier to trace around if the paper is thicker as opposed to thinner, as you will see in a moment, because I, I traced around all the thin ones I had, and it kept kind of sliding on me a little bit. So the thicker pieces of paper won't slide as bad, right? So the challenge comes in this area here at the top of the E, where I have the hole that I need to cut out. The thing you never ever want to do is try to stab it with your scissors because that's a good way for you to cut yourself if you have it here and you have your finger here supporting it. Next thing you know, you have sliced your finger good. We don't want you to do that, right? So what you want to do is you want to pinch it. Take it and pinch it somewhere in the middle. 
carve a little nick with your scissors like so. And then you have a hole for you to get into that you can cut around. This is important for your safety. And it's all about the safety, right? Yay! All right, so now I have the E. So after I have cut out all the letters that I want, and I suggest very strongly that you have more than one set of letters. In other words, you have maybe, if your name is Sue, I have three different S's, three different U's, three different E's, and then maybe the silhouette of my name. That's gonna make for a more interesting design overall, and it will work really well. So, now you wanna take the patterns that you've cut and put them on your poster board. You can lay them all out so you can kind of get an idea of how you want them laid out. You can lay them out straight, angled, um, and then you wanna remove them as, except for the one and trace around it. Then after you've traced that one, put it aside and lay down your next pattern and trace around it. And then put that aside and put down your next pattern and trace around that. When you get done, you're going to have a lot of letters that are overlapping each other. At this point, you have some choices to make. You can do a little erasing so that some of those letters connect and become one shape, or you can work with just the overlapped shapes. But basically, each shape that you have that you've created from the overlapping gives you a new place to put down pattern or solid or whatever you want to do to kind of play and color and be creative. Now that you've had a chance to see how the asymmetrical was laid out, we're going to dive in and look at how the more uniform design is laid out. So the chances of it being symmetrical and radial are pretty high but it all depends on how you decide to color your design in the end. All right, let's talk about design. Really what we want is we want something that's fun, um, that's different, and that maybe uses our name. So, there are lots of different things that we can do that will utilize our name. I'm gonna give you two different options and at that point, you know, you may decide that there's a third option or a fourth option, but these are just possibilities. So the first one that we're gonna look at is a radial symmetrical design using the letters of my name. To do that, I have to create a grid. And we already know that this poster board is 14 inches, right? So I want to, and really and truly, you have to decide whether you want the, the box with your name design on the bottom or the top, okay? I'm gonna do it at the bottom. I can even do it in the middle. If you wanna figure that one out, you can. So I'm gonna come over here at the very bottom and I'm going to set the ruler. You can see that, I've set the ruler right at the 14. Remember, 14 is where the larger line is between the one and the four. It's very important. If you're off just a little bit, it will really mess up your, um, your grid that we're going to be making here. And I'm gonna move it over a little bit and do it again. I will connect those two points so that I now have a square. Very good. I am going to come through now and measure half of that. Well, what's half of 14? Seven, yep. So in this case, the line that I want to use to measure is the longer line right next to the seven. like so. 
awesome. Now in this case, I want to draw this line very, very lightly because it is a grid that I might need to erase. If you bear down, you won't be able to erase. So I'm going to hold my pencil at the very top because that ensures that I can't put a whole lot of pressure on. And I'm just going to lightly drag it right against those two points. I don't know if you can see that from this distance. Maybe I'll take some pictures here in a minute. I'm going to do the same thing on the side. I'm going to place my ruler. I've got 14 there, and I'm going to make a mark 7. And I'm going to make a mark at 7. And I'm going to connect. And once again, I want a very, very light, light line. So, drag, light line. Corner to corner. That's where a longer ruler works a lot better but if you have to I'm going to use two I've got two here so that I can make sure I kind of get them lined up like so and I'm going to very lightly draw my mark now if you did this right that diagonal line should end up right in the very center. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And, you know, really what you could do if you have a short ruler is just go from the center to the corner and then move it center to corner. That will work as well. And that gives us the grid that we want. When you are finished drawing, your grid should look something like this, only a lot lighter. I know it was difficult to see in the video that I just did because I was drawing so light. So I wanted you to see what it might look like when it was laid out with your pencil. Okay, so next what you need is a piece of Xerox paper and a ruler. You're going to place your ruler right at the very corner of the Xerox paper so that it lines up with the edge of the paper and you want to make a mark right at the 7 inch uh, measuring spot. And then you want to do this again for the top. So if you've got this on the side of the Xerox paper, start at the same exact corner, measure 7 inches and put another dot. You're then going to draw a line that connects those two dots so that you have a 7 inch right isosceles triangle. At this point, you're going to lay in your name uh, so that it stretches out into the triangle. This is very important. You're not going to get a good design unless your name touches at all three sides of that triangle. Now, if there's one or two uh, letters that don't touch, no biggie, but really, if you can get them to touch, all of them to touch, then you're going to have a better design overall. Now that you have your name drawn into the triangle, you're going to place it on your grid like so. Then you want to look at it and kind of visualize what that's going to look like. For me, when I placed it like this, it made a square. When I flip it and place it again, it makes a more interesting shape. Your choice. Once you've done that, you're going to place a dot at the corner in that pattern so that you always place that dot in the center part of your grid. Okay, that's very important. Now that you've made that decision, you're going to flip your name upside down. Hopefully you've uh, drawn dark enough. You'll know because if you can see it through the paper, you've drawn dark enough. If you can't, then you probably need to draw a little darker before you do this. You're going to flip it and then you're going to take your pencil and you're going to basically shade over the lines that you can see through the back of that paper. This is going to transfer your name to the poster board. Now that you've transferred it the first time, you're going to take your pattern and flip it over again, place it into the triangle, make sure the circle's at the center, and you're going to take the point of your pencil and trace your name. 
you're going to repeat this process until you have your name drawn eight times into this grid, like so. Unity is an important concept in art. It's one of our main principles. And so when you get finished, you're going to have eight separate triangles of design. And we want to make this entire piece of artwork look like one cohesive piece. To do that, the best way is to start erasing. So you're going to start erasing the lines that you don't want. You can keep some of them. And then you'll end up with a design where your name sort of disappears unless you're looking for it. It's kind of like an optical illusion, which is really, really cool. So now it's time to create with color. You can color it any way you'd like. Um, just remember that if you want it to be symmetrical, all of the pieces parts pretty much have to be the same when you're coloring. Uh, so enjoy. All right, so when you finish the design part right in here, you have this blank space here. Now, the trick is to be careful about how you do this. And yes, teachers make mistakes too. So I want this to open up like it's a book, right? Well, I wasn't paying attention and lo and behold, I ended up making my design upside down because I, I intended it to kind of look like this, right? So, to fix that, I went into the negative space and wrote my name about four or five more times there so that it would kind of make sense and be part of the design, right? Uh, artists make the most of their mistakes. Anyway, so your next step after you have done whatever you would like to do in this space, that's kind of you space there for you to be creative, you're going to take either scrap poster board, or if you're at home and you don't have any more poster boards, you can use a product box. This is just about the right size for making this work. I can get, you know, two strips here. We're going to make a pocket. So I didn't have a full sheet of poster board here stuck at home, so I had kind of a partial leftover piece from another project. So it was just the right, right width length, whatever, and I wanted to be kind of different, so I scalloped the edge. You don't have to, just a straight pocket's fine. Again, I want this to open up like it was a book, like if I could, you know, read it, right? And I want to staple the pocket so it's flush with the edge on the side here. If there's a gap here in the middle, that's okay. That just makes it easy for it to close. If you have one full strip that you fold in half, uh, you're going to have to staple it just a tad differently. Otherwise, it won't open and close the way you want it to. So if you have a full strip that you folded in half, you're going to hold your um, folder just like this. Huh? And let's pretend like this is my piece right here. I don't know if you can see that. So here's my piece. Okay, and, and it's folded in half, right? You're going to hold it at a 90 degree angle. And the trick would be then to put a staple in, like so and like so. And then once you've got it stapled twice here, you can drop it where it's a little easier. Now, you'll notice the way I was holding that stapler. So now I'm going to staple in my little two pieces pockets. I am going to work from the inside out. That way, if it moves or does something funny, I can just trim it, right? I want to make sure that the little prong pieces of the staple go to the inside of the folder. This is very important so that you don't cut yourself as you are carrying that folder around. And then you're just going to staple all the way around. Make sure you can see this and maybe one right here and that creates your pocket so that if you've got smaller pieces of artwork you can slide them in and they're not going to fall out okay yeah perfect